Today I am demonstrating my mocks on Yagi for Leo satellite operations. This has been mounted on a push up mast in a fixed elevation and azimuth. That is because I do not have an antenna rotator and I am also not able to work outside the home because of local restrictions. Ideally, this should be used as a handheld antenna or placed on a tripod outside your home and operated in such a way that the antenna can be rotated in the axis as well as in the direction of the satellite in azimuth and elevation. Rotation in the axis is meant for adjusting polarization. We know that satellite in orbit is not just uh, moving around, it uh, tumbles and uh, there are changes in the direction of the satellite antenna which is occurring continuously so that a particular polarization, this is a linear polarized antenna, it can be kept either horizontally or vertically but that will be linear polarized. So when it is a linear polarized antenna, and the satellite antenna is changing direction, they will not match fully well. That is why advanced operators use cross Yagi with two elements in a cross and then there will be multiple such cross elements which will produce circular polarization. But this is a very limited setup. This produces only linear polarization. So when you are operating outdoors, you can rotate it in such a way that it can match the polarization of the antenna. But this is not that way. This is a fixed position. You can see that the larger element in the shape of a rectangle is the Moxon rectangle or Moxon element which has been used for VHF. This is a VHF element. That's why it is larger. And you have five UHF elements are over here. All these have been mounted on a PVC pipe which is surplus from wiring. That is electrical wiring pipe it is being used here. This is a PVC T which has been used and a length of PVC pipe for mounting it on the push-up mass. And the coax has been uh, made into a couple of circles over here that is acting as an RF choke or line isolator. Of course, this is not a very ideal type of construction. This is only a prototype and I am also learning the process of making antennas. This is in fact my third antenna, but of, of the lot, one of the most successful advantages that it has only one feed point. Usually, VHF, UHF antennas have two feed points there will be two cables coming out of it. Here, the Moxon element is passively coupled to the UHF elements. So, there is no connection for, to the radio for this UHF elements. So, there is only one feed line. As there is only one driven element and only one feed line, you do not need a diplexer, a circuit to isolate between the two is not needed. That is the advantage. And when this boom is due, made by PVC and these are made by aluminum pipes, 3 by 8 inch aluminum pipes, the Yagi itself is very light for outdoor operations. But I am not using it for outdoor operations. I have connected this to the uh, radio in my shack and that is a limited way of operating satellites as you will not be able to rotate it without a rotator and you will not be able to twist it in the direction of polarization and this is only a linear polarized antenna. Still with this antenna I was able to work uh, International Space Station voice transponder several times, travel satellites and uh, recently AO91 satellite. And more important, I was able to receive slow scan television images, SSTV images during the great SSTV event from International Space Station in the past 
few days. Several images could be received with this very limited setup. A little bit about the principle of Moxon rectangle named after Le Moxon. This is the driven element which is cut into two and this is the Moxon reflector element. Both together form a rectangle. Reflector element is longer and insulators are in place to keep it fixed in a rectangular position in a single plane. This is the feed point. And uh, uh, the advantage of this Moxon position is that if you lengthen these to either sides, then the horizontal dimension of the antenna increases. This is a similar way to make the antenna horizontally shorter in dimension without losing its effectiveness. This has uh, a directivity in the direction of the feed point and uh, it has modest gain and a high front to back ratio. That is the advantage of the Moxon rectangle. There is a software known as MoxGen by AC6LA which can be used to calculate the dimensions of the Moxon rectangle for a given frequency of operation. That software is uh, available online. You can uh, use that to calculate the dimensions, whichever part you want to know. I have not calculated it personally. I made the Yagi by a design available online which has been tested and proved and it has been used by very many LEO satellite operators worldwide. This is the picture taken soon after I had cut the elements for the Moxon Yaki. This is the Moxon section and this is the Yagi section that is just like the Yagi Uda antenna. Only difference is that this Yagi section will not have any direct connection to the radio. It is passively coupling to the driven element of the Moxon rectangle. Only difference is that. And uh, in the design which was given online, they were using aluminum welding rods of 3.2 millimeter diameter. I had these pipes, these are 3 by 8 inch aluminum pipes which I had bought for making my conventional VHF and UHF Yagis. So I had plenty of this in surplus. So I did not want to get any additional uh, 3 by 2, 3.2 millimeter welding rods. Of course, that was also not available in any of the local markets. I had to buy it online from somewhere else. The problem here was to bend the pipes. I discussed with several persons. Some said that you can feel sand within the pipe, plug at both ends and uh, keep it on a gas stove and bend it here. And uh, somebody said that after bending it may not be possible to take out the sand also. Another person, one of my friends told me, why should you bother so much? You just bend it like that using a pliers. That's what I have done. And you can see that uh, the ends are not very neat. Still it works. That's a more important for amateur radio. We are not professionals and we want our setup to work rather than have an aesthetic importance. So I didn't spend much time making this section because it was very easy keeping a plier here and then bending it just like that without using any feeling of sand, keeping on gas stove or have, having their own risk. So I just bend it like that even though it is not aesthetically nice. And this is, I have just uh, kept it on the floor and taken a photograph to show the VHF and UHF elements. These are the dimensions as per M1GEO G8 OCV design. This is, I think, a father and son duo. They have used uh, vector analyzers and uh, perfected their design from another design. And this is not exactly their design as I have made some modifications 
to suit my local situation. These elements, instead of the 3.2 mm aluminum rods, welding rods, which they have described, I have replaced it with uh, um, aluminum pipes, 3 by 8 inch aluminum pipes, which are available locally and quite cheap also. And the boom they have described is a wooden boom, which again, I did not go for that because I didn't have it. This is a circular pipe, that is a PVC pipe, so plus from my home wiring progr programs. Then another difference was they had uh, soldered the uh, connections, coax connections to the driven element directly at this point, feed point. As uh, I did not want to do that, as I had a short length 10 meter cable, a coaxial cable, HLF 200 coaxial cable with PL259 connectors at both ends. So I didn't want to cut it and uh, get it raw. I fixed a SO239 connector on the boom using an L clamp which I had been use I had been using for my other antenna projects and I used short pieces of insulated copper wire to connect to both feed points. I can show you a picture of that soon. And these are the dimensions. These dimensions are positions on the boom. This is the position of the MOX on reflector element. This is the position of the MOX on driven element and given in yellow are the positions of the UHF elements on the boom. This has zero. And what is given vertically are the measurements of the elements. The 700 means this dimension and this portion is 150 millimeter, this portion is 106 millimeter. These two portions are same, 700 each. And you can see the measurements of each of the uh, UHF Yagi elements. A difference is seen here. I would have expected this should be shorter than this one. But uh, there is a difference in the distance also. It is not uh, uniform. Whatever it was uh, by modeling by M1 GEO and G8. OCV. I didn't want to change it because uh, I don't have any modeling software nor do I have a vector network analyzer. I only have a SWR meter. So I didn't want to change it. It was just a trial and error. Final stages I had to trim these driven element a little mainly because this was very near each other. I had to trim a little bit and I uh, fix the spacer here also. So I've made some modifications and uh, various testing initial SWR was 2.5 is to 1. And finally, I've been able to bring it down to about uh, 1.4, 1.5, both for VHF and UHF elements. They had found that this has uh, better performance on UHF than VHF. I have been able to use this antenna both for VU satellites which are more common in this region and UV satellites. UV satellite means uplink on UHF and downlink on VHF. Both types of satellites I have used this antenna with fair success. This is the way I connected the SO239 connector to the driven element with uh, two pieces of uh, insulated copper wire. I had soldered here initially only. Then uh, later I had soldered this joint, this joint, as well as this joint during my revisions. And the gap was also adjusted later to be uniform all during the testing process as I found the SWRS 2.5 to 1 initially and the performance was not good. So I brought the antenna down several times and uh, adjusted each parameters. I had to change the 
dimensions. I mean, not the dimension. This was poor workmanship. I had kept it not very accurately. And that I had adjusted later. This, of course, I could not do it because this is... I found it very tough to cut this piece of clamp, which was made of uh, galvanized iron, I think. It was not being cut well with my hacksaw blade. So really tough time. Drilling the hole for the SO239 was also difficult. I had drilled many holes initially and tried to collapse them. I finally it didn't work. I took the to the industrial and uh, got their flak as well for trying such crude methods. Anyway, finally uh, I, I could get SWR of nearly 1.5 to 1 and I could get uh, the antenna working. 